king. Blessed are the people who know the sound of the shofar. In the light of your countenance, so Yahweh shall they walk. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Eshir Kitshiyanu, Bemisotov Etzibanu, Lishmoach Shofar. Blessed are you, O Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and has commanded us to hear the voice of the Shofar.
is coming. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. And Shalom Aleichem. Oh, what an awesome, awesome Shabbat. Amen. Beautiful weather, a little on the cool side. We are blessed that we have the opportunity through the internet and live stream and all that other stuff to be able to connect and to do things where, you know, when you can't, there is no option or maybe you're sick, maybe you have to be quarantined, some, anything like that, at least you can still plug in, right? So that part is a blessing. But it absolutely does not take the place of physical community. This has to be what is a pani a pani. It's a face to face. You have to be in the presence of one another to really get community. And that was even that showed up last night. Uh, apparently, Lisa watched a little longer than I did, and the live stream, I guess, on Facebook or no uh, YouTube. All the comments, the moderators over there, they had to shut it down because a bunch of trolls jumped on there. I don't know exactly what they were saying, but they were messing everything up. So it goes to the fact that we can't do this virtually. This can't. Now, now virtual can be, a, I said, a nice little safety line in different rare occasions, but it cannot be the primary. We have to be together as community. Amen. Yes. Y'all have been praying for my neighbor. Uh, I, a lot of you have been. And I text his wife this morning to check on him, and she said he's much better today. So I just want to thank you seriously for all your prayers because that man is a go-getter, and he blesses people all the time, and he blessed me abundantly, and I praise Abba for, for healing him. Yeah, amen. There's a lot that are sick, even in the body. But what the Father's doing is is awesome. But I'll tell you, it's not all butterflies and rainbows and, and all that either. And that's kind of what we'll get into in my message. But we have to gird each other up. We have to pray for each other. We have to support each other, not only spiritually, but physically. Like Mark shared what... What, you know, he's a big, big part of that, right? Being our biggest helper. He's out there mowing people's yards, fixing people's stuff. I mean, whatever needs to be done in the community, he's doing it. But not only is he, he's not alone. Other people, we need to be able to continue to reach out and to share and to help each other in a very physical, tangible way. That's a big, big part of community, and that's what's going to keep us together and keep us through. Now, we may be more of a first fruits in a lot of ways to where we've been kind of doing this community thing for a longer period of time. Some people are just going to be starting this. They really feel right now that the Father's going to be reaching out to peoples that have a pastor's heart to really start to stir them to start doing community. But I'll tell you, anybody who's been in here, raise your hands if this is a true statement. We, coming into community, have to learn how to successfully live in community. It's not an automatic. Because typically, we, got, we come in here with a non-trusting attitude. Most of us feel or come to the realization you think you've been lied to and it's all a big thing and you don't trust anybody. So it's all out the window. And then the Father starts to show you some truth and that's all great. But if you get too far into making your own theology and exactly how everything is and then you can try to jump into a community and they may not see everything exactly the way you see it and all of a sudden there's some rub. A lot of that times is that's that roughness. We have to get off and realize that there is a covering. There's a supernatural protection. Just as a husband in the family, that the father in the family is responsible for leading that family, 
those in the family have a protection because of the father. They're the same thing with the, the leadership here with Mark and Tammy and the elders. Us praying going together, even if you may not agree with every little bit and point of theology or whatever that's going on, but that's okay. There is protection in the herd. He is straightening all of us up from, from the top down. So there's something to be said, and I, I can imagine the people, I said, starting the communities that are going to be starting, they're going to need that grace. The Father's really going to have to, because that's half the time why communities have problems right now, especially in our Hebrew roots world, is they get rubbed theologically or whatever. They think it's, it's got to be this way, and I don't agree with that. The next thing you know, they can't, they can't walk together, and they got to go another direction. We have to be willing and malleable to say it's okay. And guess what? If we're walking something that's not quite right, it'll get he'll straighten it out. As long as we stay together, we stay focused on him, he will straighten it out. It may not be as fast as you want to, you may be right, but it may not be time yet. So we have to have the patience to wait on him and not start overstepping him. He will get us to where we need to go. We need to have the faith that he will get us to where we need to go. Amen? Don, go ahead. Come on. Oh, Rosh Kadesh, uh, Father laid something on my heart about this community thing. You know, we've, we've been talking for a while, but <clears throat> Tyler, I had to go back and take rid of my CWI Actually, last year. Anyhow, we go through their class, you know, right there, and you got the uh, the code book, and you got the knowledge. Then you have a practical. And once you understand what the fundamentals are and the, the knowledge of everything, the hardest part is application. And that's that's what we need. What we're talking about here. Even though me and Tyler may not have a lot of uh, common things in common, but I promise you, that buffer zone between me and Tyler is your shoe. That's what makes us common. So when Tyler hurts, I hurt with Tyler. Vice versa. And I was looking at the blocks over here. If y'all if y'all look at any, done any type of uh, cement work, and uh, what do you actually think that holds those blocks together? The mortar. There's something deeper than the mortar. What's in the mortar that holds it together? Water and what else? Which is a small part of it. Everyone in this assembly a part of it. You're holding something together. And we apply ourselves, but even though we don't want to fit, that's true, and you sure doesn't fit. If we'll just be up, you know, to be offered, say, look, put me where you need to be. But you can't sit there. This is this is a doing thing. There's something you have to do to apply. So I went back and uh, anyhow, I, I busted my CWI test on the fundamentals by one point. And the fathers always teach me that one, one point. You almost made it. But what did you didn't do? It's the application. I understand the knowledge. I understand all the codes. Are, but the application is what we've got to do. That's the reason it's so important to get with a community that understands what the tour is. Because once you understand that, you can start doing it. When you start doing, things start to happen. And I'm saying, if I see Mark over here struggling, I don't need to wait for him to call me. You know, step out, go do that. If I see Tyler struggling, whatever, whatever the situation, financial, whatever it may be, step in and do it. Well, I don't have but ten dollars. You know what? Ten dollars to somebody that ain't got nothing, that's a lot of money. And don't you start thinking everybody's wondering that, well, if I won the lottery, I'd give everything. He ain't worried about winning the lottery. If you won't give the two dollars you got in your pocket, you ain't gonna give two million. And that's where that's what we have to be on this community thing is what are we willing to do? And Arnold, <laughs> you know, you've been you've been teaching it for over what two or three years now. People can tell you. And that freezer, that lights go out. And all that stuff spoils, what are you going to do? I don't can't feed this community. You know what I'm saying? The other day, we got, we got to do it our own self. And that's the reason I appreciate these little camp outs we do every year because these younger boys get up there, they listen to what we're saying. And I remember Caleb said it a long time ago. You better watch out. What you do, because I'm watching. Whatever you do, I'm going to do. And that's the reason it's so important to live a righteous, blameless life. I know we're going to fail. You know, it's just human nature. We, we're not perfect yet. 
But the thing is, are we going to stay down or are we going to get up? Because Job said, a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. And Doug and I have been, you know, we've been this thing for over, over 20-something years, and I've seen people come and go. But what keeps us together is the heart. Those who have pure in heart. Because I've seen people come in with good attitudes, and you know what? They'll blow in and blow out. But what you're always looking for is genuine love. And I remember Rico said it years ago. I might not like you, but I got to love you. I got to love you. So let that sink in. I'm talking about, you know, when we start doing our Torah studies and, and reading our scripture and all, find out what you can do to apply that. Because if Mark and Tammy, if they, if they was to never come back to the assembly, y'all think the assembly is going to dissolve? This ain't their assembly. This is Yahweh's. And that's what we have to realize. We, we, sometimes we put our focus on a man and we think that, that, that I'm going to get all my source from him. You're going down the wrong road. Because I promise you, Yahweh can cause a jackass to speak. So what you have to realize, if somebody's not available, he's going to use somebody. And I always use it. And that's reading so many times I have to struggle with, do I need to get, get up here and speak or do I need to shut up? Like sometimes I have to shut up because he was speaking to me. But if he ain't speaking to me, I don't think I can apply it to y'all. But that's where the Father did with, this is a community thing. And I, and I and Margaret, you and Jared, I've seen y'all go through the, the transmission. I kind of sniggered. I'm going like, boy, what's that the only problem I have? <laughs> because what I'm saying, you think you got it bad. If you look over the next person. I remember a thing years ago, somebody complained about you know not having no shoes. Then he said he turned around and looked. He seen a fellow with no feet. So which one's the worst? You see what I'm saying? That's, then I think that's what he's telling us right now is, y'all think you got it bad? You ain't seen bad yet. It's coming. And we need and the only way. And I said this years ago. This community is like a, a link of chain. Remember that time we was talking about that years ago. Those individual links in a bucket ain't no good, but just just wait is all that is. But when those links are put together, it can be used. And you're only as strong as your weakest, your weakest link. So my question is, why are you weak? If you're weak in a certain area, find somebody strong in that area and ask them how do you get there. Because I promise you, I always wonder myself, why is prayer so relevant? God laughs at us. Because it's nothing but just asking you. He already knows what the answer is. That's what's crazy about it. He knows what the answer is. But I may get a little choked up on this part. The other day was, me and Gideon was up in the, had to reduce the warrant to my pump. Uh, electrical war went out. I put him up in the attic. We're talking about an eight-year-old, Tyler. He called and I said, do not step between those jaws. I said, you're going through the sheetrock. I said, mama's going to be mad. Y'all got a picture. He's on the inside of the attic. I'm on the outside of the house. And I got a ladder propped up there, and he's, he's trying to communicate with me. And I heard him up there praying. He said, Lord, he said, don't let me fall to this attic. He said, I don't want to disappoint my daddy. He said, I want to, I want to, I want to please my daddy. I got thinking that here I was, I was so angry. Still. And he spoke that little prayer. He didn't even know I'm listening to him. But he said, I want to please my father. And that touched me. And that's all I want to do is please my father. But if I see somebody in need and neglect it, where is the love of God? John talks about that. If we see somebody needing something and do not give to them, where is the love of God in us? And I'm not talking about finances or physical things, but it could be anything as a hug. At that moment, I'm, even a word spoken at the right time is like medicine to the bone. And that's what makes this community so good right? because it's, it's so diversity, you know? There's people I don't even know in here. But I promise you, I will get to know you. And, and, that, and I promise you, if there's something else too, if you see somebody you don't know, just stop and talk to them. Because you'll see a bond there. It goes back to that mortar. Those each particles, Mark, is what bond us together. And the more the particles get together, the more strength you've got. And guess what? If you don't fit in, don't worry. Because iron sharpens iron. And the whole time we're rubbing each other the right way. Because you'll fit if you'll give it time and let the Father put you in the right spot. Amen. Good word. Like what Don said, it's got to be about love. Paul said with everything, 
he can, he can have everything in the world, every gifting and all that. If I have, and I don't have love, I have nothing. Love for one another. First off, love for love for the Father, love for Yeshua. First and foremost, translates to love amongst each other. If we have love, and that is primary, that is the driving force, not just something off to the side. If that's the driving force, the little bits of theology, whatever is tearing us apart, it causes the rub, won't, it doesn't have a place. Mark even said, and we said before last night, we need to major in the majors and minor in the minors. We got to quit majoring in the little stuff. We can do that. We can put everything into balance. We can walk in a chad. We can walk together. We can be the body of Messiah he desires us to be. All right. Well, let's go ahead and we'll stand. We'll do the we'll do our, our blessings, uh, do the Shema via Hafta, and we'll bless our sons and daughters. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Baruch Shem Kivod Malchuto Leolam Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Et Yahweh Elohecha, v'chol levavcha, v'chol nafshicha, v'chol meodecha, they are you, Hadavrim Haele, Ashir Anochi, Miss of Hayoma, Levavecha, Veshinan Tam Levanecha, Vedi Barta Bam, Beshif de Habavatecha, Uvlech de Habaderek, Uvshachvicha, Uvikomecha, Ukshartha Am Leot Al Yadecha, They are you, let Uktav tam al mezuzot betecha uvisha recha veahavta recha kamocha. You shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Yeah, here you go. Okay. There we go. There, where's the prayers? Oh, no. Isaiah 54, 13. All your children should be taught of y'all, and the well-being of your children should be great. Isaiah 54, 13. Good job. 6 through 47. Set your minds and hearts on the words Elohim commands you, that you may command them to your children, that they may be watchful to do all the words of the Torah. For it is not an empty and worthless trial for you. It is your very life. Deuteronomy 32 through 47. Thank you. Okay, guys. Are you ready? Okay. Point your hands to the guys. Ready? This, what, eyes to see your truth. 
In Yeshua's name, amen. Thank you. Okay, now everybody else, by his grace, not one will be lost. Protect and defend you. May He always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining day. May you be like a roof. and defend you. May Yahweh preserve you His way. Favor them, O oh Yah, with happiness and peace. O oh, hear our Sabbath prayer. I
First Bar King with a new hallelujah. Amen? I don't think she's going to instruct, so we're just going to get right into it. Let's do it.
Even if the circumstances are not what we want, we will praise him. In victory, Father, we will honor and praise him. We desire, Father, that we would be able to become history makers. That we can fall on our knees, Father, that we can truly and truly come before you and desire your will and your ways in this state and our country, Father. Let us spiritually put on the armor of our King and be ready to fight. Raising hallelujahs, raising a banner of love. Let us be that mighty army for you, Father. Is it true today that when people pray, cloudless skies will break, kings and queens will shake? Yes, it's true.
into your arms again into
well with our soul. Father, we want our hearts to have a heart of worship that leans on you, that desires you in all things, Father. That at the moment that the music might fade and that there's no fancy microphones and sound systems, Father, that we could still go about our days bringing you glory. That we can let the heart of worship that can be in this atmosphere resonate past our Shabbat into Sunday and Monday and the rest of the week. Help us, Father, continue to lead a life of worship, one of obedience, of sound judgment, Father, one that follows your word.
guide us each and every day. Father, let us fill ourselves with your word. That can just throw fertilizer on our spiritual man, Father, that we can grow and flourish. That we can be a light to those around us, Father, that we can as the words that were spoken earlier in this service, for that we can truly show love to our neighbor. That we can truly be more about the herd and less about the individual. Help remove us, Father, from this, from this self-built, selfie-made society that we've become very accustomed to. us draw closer to you, help us draw closer to the concepts and the principles of, of unity and being in a God, and being about each other, not about our social status. Father, but instead, what's our status on how we've helped our neighbor? Caring less about how many likes we have, Father, or views, but more about how much we've viewed others and how we can help them. Give us that paradigm shift, Father. And ultimately, Father, that the spirit of our living King can reside in this place, can reside in each and every one of us. We want to harbor your spirit, Father. We want to harbor the fruits of your spirit, every one of them. So yeah, we allow this praise as we've brought it, Father, in your worship and the words that have been given. Allow it to be a sweet incense. We receive it, Father. Allow it to, to, to settle in our spirits, that we can let it marinate, Father, and that it will bear fruit in its season. Even though in these very moments we don't always get to see, it's not every one of us that gets to know the outcome of every one of these words. Father, you know. Father, you know. You know what. You know what matters. The conversations that take in private, that take place in private, Father. The different ones that that in private will say, "Man, I needed that." It's not going to be for every single one of us. So let the rest of us, Father, be mindful, be sensitive to your Spirit. To just join in. So we just come to you as a body, Father. We raise our hallelujahs to your throne. We've raised our voices. We've played instruments. We've waved banners. We've raised our hands and clapped and sang, Father. And every last ounce of it is all for you, our King. For no other reason but to honor you, Father. So be honored, be blessed, and glorified. Be a sweet incense. We lift up our praise and our worship to you, Father. Let chains be broken, Father. Let things and lies be revealed. Let eyes be opened. Let your Son, Yeshua, in so many ways, Father, be revealed. Right. Blessing of the third tithe, all together. You shall say before Yahweh our Elohim, I have removed the sacred portion from my house and also have given it to the Levite and the alien, the orphan and the widow, according to all your commandments which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed or forgotten any of your commandments. I have not eaten of it while mourning, nor have I removed any of it while I was unclean, nor offered any of it to the dead. I have listened to the voice of Yahweh my Elohim, I have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven. Bless your people, Israel, and the ground which you have given us, a land flowing with milk and honey, as you swore to our fathers. Amen. Baruch Adonai, 
Eloheinu melech haolam, asher bachar bar minikol ha'amin, v'natan lanu et torato, baruch ata Adonai, noten ha'torah. Amen. Bless Yahweh the Blessed One. Blessed is Yahweh the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Yahweh our Elohim, King of the Universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Yah, giver of the Torah. Amen. We pray for an awesome spirit-filled service, and he answers his promises. He answers our prayers. Amen. So what I want to talk about was siege warfare. Does everybody feel like we've been in a siege all year? So it kind of ties into some things which I'm not going to go directly into. There's a... Uh, Prophecy in Zechariah that says, Thus says the Yahweh of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth month, the fast of the seventh month, and the fast of the tenth month will become joy, gladness, and cheerful feast for the house of Judah. So love, truth, and peace. Thus says the Yahweh of hosts, I will be, it will yet be that all the peoples will come, even the inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one will go to another, saying, Let us go up at once to entreat the favor of Yahweh and to seek Yahweh of hosts. I will, I will also go so many peoples and mighty nations will come and seek Yahweh of hosts in Jerusalem and entreat the favor of Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, in those days ten men from all the nations will grasp the hem of a garment of a Jew, saying, let us go with you, for we have heard that Elohim is with you. So that's the bigger message of trying to kind of lay a map out of what those look like, because there's good evidence that that kind of lay, that's, that timing of these fasts seem to kind of be laying out uh, in our modern day. One of the keys is the first thing, give you a teaser, the first thing that happens that is actually on the, on the uh, time clock is actually the fast of the 10th month, and that Fast is all about the siege of Jerusalem, being shut in by the enemy. And like I said, I felt like this has been a siege. And it just so happens that on that day, that is uh, the tenth of Tibet, which is the so the Tibet's the tenth month. So the tenth of tenth of the tenth month in 2020. Well, the first time in 2020 in January. It was actually fell the exact same day that it was officially, COVID-19 was officially named. It was named, not just in word, but it was actually officially published in, uh, I forgot what the document is, where they actually, like on the WHO, where they actually list it. It was listed with its name on the 10th of Tibet, in Jan which fell in January this year. And corresponds with a siege. That's just some more things about uh, being in a siege on the picture. But and it's definitely felt like one. So around the siege, so I don't really won't go into the uh, to the other fast days at this point. But a siege is actually means it actually comes from Latin to from a word that means to sit. Now, if you've watched some different movies, like, uh, I know we start thinking of uh, kind of old-time battles and sieges and things like that. If you've watched Lord of the Rings, you see, like, the big, massive foot armies marching against, you know, big fortified cities and all that stuff. And if that's your picture, that's not exactly how it happens at all, because it's not fast. The idea is my army is way stronger than your army, but you 
have the safety and security of being inside of a fortified city with a big wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to encamp all around you. I'm just going to seal you off and wait you out. So a lot of times, not only is it the waiting, there's negotiations. Because there's, there's this. There's talking back and forth, right? The enemy taunting those inside. And even those inside sometimes taunting the enemy or they're trying to, to broker some deals. Right, a little bribe here, a little bribe there to get something in or out. But these things, sieges last from months to years. This is not a quick endeavor. Eventually, there is fighting, there is a battle, but that doesn't happen till a long time later unless one decides just to give up early. Lockdowns, quarantines. That sound like, that feel, feel like a siege? Is it just happening here? Happening all across, all over the world. It says siege warfare is a form of constant, low intensity conflict characterized by one party holding a strong, statistic, de, static, defensive position. When you're in a siege, when you're locked in, when you're locked out. Fear, anxiety set in. Are we supposed to be fearful or anxious over nothing, right? But we human, <laughs> and we fail. Sometimes I'll tell you, for me personally, there's been so much going on around this. I mean, everybody's experienced there. Some people are like, I used to work. Now they're just at home. Their work shut down. They got, I mean, there's all the anxiety around all that. For me, it's been exact 180. It's been crazy, busy, ever changing. Nothing is routine or flowing. It's just a, it's like you're fighting constant battles and challenges and all this other stuff. It's just the problem is that keeps me focused out here and not up here. That's why I said I needed to refocus myself. I need to have the weapons of my warfare. It says the sieges involve surrounding a target to block provision of supplies and the reinforcement or escape of troops. So if you're in a siege, what's, what's the normal tactic? If, you're, if I'm in my city and I'm locked, I'm hunkered down, I'm good. They ain't, they ain't coming in, at least not for a long while. I got some time. What's a tool I can use? Hey, Egypt, what you doing? Hey, uh, I'm in a little situation. You think you maybe you can come up here and help me out? Usually try to get an ally to come over there and attack the siege that's on from the outside and, and pull them away from you. All too often, that's what's gotten Israel in trouble. Relying on that, phone a friend, instead of phone him, right? Get that direct line. They use deception and treachery to bypass defenses. How about supply lines? How about toilet paper? <laughs> Whoever thought that the supply line that would be hit would be toilet paper? Come on, people. <laughs> Toilet paper, paper towels. Ridiculous. But in reality, it's affected global supply lines. Right, Keith? The global supply lines, which over time, this doesn't surprise him, over time, global supply lines have gotten more and more and more efficient as part of business to the point of very few people have Large warehouses full of supplies like they used to. Right? Well, just get another order from the warehouse. The warehouse isn't there. We got Lisa had a term. It's just in time. Just in time inventory. The idea if I if I'm a business owner and I have to have a humongous warehouse and keep it stocked and staffed and all that stuff, that's an expense. If I can cut that warehouse out of the equation. We can save some money. 
right? Well, that's what we got to. But everybody has to go from production right to transportation straight to the, the end product. We don't have a lot of that middle stuff. Anymore. We don't have that capacity. And that's worldwide. And that's why we all of a sudden take a little run on toilet paper. All of a sudden, like, what, did we shut down the toilet paper factories? They can't do anything? No, they're, they're still producing. They don't have that buffer. We can't take those bobbles. We can't take those hits without affecting our all the supply. And that's hitting everything. It talked about the most common practice for siege warfare is to lay a siege and just wait for the surrender of the enemies inside, or quite commonly to coerce someone inside to betray the fortification. How many times has Mark said, don't listen to the enemy? He's got you locked down. He's got you uncomfortable. You don't want to be here. You're squirming. I want to get out. I want my life back. I want all this stuff. And he can just, just talk in that ear. Keep working that, working that, working that. Be careful who we're listening to. It says as the siege progressed, the surrounding army would, be, would build earthworks completely to completely encircle the target, preventing food, water, and other supplies from reaching the besieged city. You see up there, that's kind of a little model they have of a, of a siege. You can kind of see the grayish wall in the background is kind of like was the regular. All that stuff in front with the, looks like the crisscross and all those ramps and all that stuff, that was built by the sieging army. Basically, they just start a big old construction project and just start working it, working it, working it, working it, working it till they can finally get all the things in place to where they're ready. They think they can now breach your defenses. But at the same time, they're trying to wear you down. They don't hit you when you're strong. By the time the battle comes, you've been out of food, you're scarce of water, disease, things like that have set in. As a matter of fact, it said, uh, it says, as the siege progressed, defenders and civilians might have been reduced to eating anything vaguely edible. Horses, family pets, the leather from shoes, and even each other. We have that in the Bible. That's actually part of the curses of Deuteronomy 28. We have to know who we're fighting. If the siege, if we're being besieged because it's a judgment from the Father, the answer is repentance. It's not taking up your arm. Because if you're fighting against the judgment, it ain't going to work. And it hasn't worked. And we've got plenty of stories right in here <laughs> that will validate in case we think it will work this time. So how about unemployment? How about the economy? The world's economy is, Dennis, is it stable? No? What will it take to break the world economy? Not much? Not much. Everything's teetering. It's ready to go. But we are not of this world. We have to look beyond that. Babylon the Great is going to fall, fall. Even though we're in Babylon, we have jobs, we get money from whatever you want to say, it's, we can't help as part of it. But guess what? When it goes away, we don't get sucked in with it. Minimize our investment in the Babylon system, but at the same time, be ready when it collapses to whatever gets lost in that. Don't be attached. Be able to step away and say, okay, Father, we'll turn it left now. In some instances, they said that they would use catapults or similar weapons used to fling diseased animals over the walls in an early example of biological warfare. You hungry? You starving? 
That may, may not look very good, but whatever, it's, it's food. And bottom line is that took, if that took place and disease, pestilence, one of the altar judgments comes out, wipes out, hey, hey, the besieged army can just walk in and everybody's dead. They just take what they want and they're gone. So we're under a siege. But the weapons of our warfare, like we talked about earlier, are praise and joy. Do the things that give us praise and joy. And be an overcomer. An overcomer, we're told to overcome. In all to the assemblies in Revelation, it says, to he who overcomes, fill in the blank, all these rewards. Overcomer, I think especially in America, we have a, a thing that overcomer is a, uh, a sign of a championship, a win. And sometimes it is. But more often than not, it's, I'm still here. I took the beating. The storm came, and I'm still standing. That's what we have to take. Jacob. When he wrestled with the angel all night long, would you say at the end of that, would you say like, you, you talk to Jake, what happened? I won. You should, you should have seen the other guy. Would Jacob have said that as he's limping? No. He prevailed. He strove. He struggled with Elohim and man, and he prevailed. He overcame. In this time, don't get discouraged. Keep up the praise. Keep up the worship. Bring joy into your life because we're going to get through this. By his grace. We may have our hands full, Mark, with the siege. It may feel like it's all coming, but we need to change our focus and focus on him. And he will give the victory. As it says, we are to stand. And when all else fails, stand. Shabbat Shalom. All right, the kibbutz Goliath, all together. Sound the great shofar for our freedom. Raise the banner to gather our exiles. And gather us together from the four corners of the earth. Praised are you, O Yahweh, who gathers in the dispersed of your people, Israel. All right, pray for, pray for the United States of America. Abba, Father giver of life, we pray for and entrust the United States of America to your loving care. You are the rock on which this nation was founded. You alone are the true source of life, liberty, and blessings. We cry out for this land to be reclaimed for your glory. May it be that you will dwell among your people. Send your spirit to touch and open the hearts of our nation and its leaders to seek your will and your ways. Grant us the ability and courage to stand for the truth, and may we be that righteous nation you have called us to be. We ask this in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. Prayer for the peace of Jerusalem, Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of Yahweh. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem that is built as a city that is compact together, to which the tribes go up even the tribes of Yahweh, in ordinance for Israel, to give thanks to the name of Yahweh, for their thrones were set for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will now say, may peace be within you. For the sake of the house of Yahweh Elohim, I will seek your good. Yevarechecha Adonai Veishmerecha 
Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift up his favor unto you and give you shalom. Amen. And it's time for the Kiddush. The blessing over the wine. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Borei Pri Amen. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim. King of the universe, who brings the fruit of the vine, and for giving us Yeshua the Messiah, who said, I am the vine, you are the branches. And the blessing over the bread. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Amotzi Lechem, Min Haaretz. Amen. Blessed are you, O Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And for giving us Yeshua the Messiah, who said, I am the bread of life. It is Shabbat. Thank the Lord. It is Shabbat.